Yo, yo, yo. Hey, everyone. How's it going? And uh, welcome to another episode of The Two Abdullahs. Today, featuring Apostate Aladdin. <laughs> hey guys. This is the first time we have Aladdin on the channel on camera. So the last time uh, we had him on, um, everyone was remarking on his beautiful voice. <laughs> <laughs> now you can see the man. So uh, yeah, it's nice to have you, Aladdin. And for everyone else, it's nice to have you as well. Finally getting back to doing the Two Abdullah show. It's been months. It's been like, I think the last episode I mean, we did man. was uh, in February, I believe. So yeah, yeah, it's been way too long, way too long. How's it going, Gondal? Good, good. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, it's yeah, been a it's while, been like long. Samir said. Uh, nice to be back. Uh, we're going to be continuing on from where we left off, but just a few updates. Um, uh, I've been busy working with other stuff, other things. So uh, we are definitely going to get back into more of a routine. It's just that uh, with the whole pandemic, you know, working again and then all over settling into life, it's just taking some time. But uh, yeah, things are getting back to normal. Make sure you get your vaccine shots and uh, let's get started. Anything else would you like to add? Uh, yeah. Aladdin? <laughs> Before Aladdin jumps in, just imagine if too. I was like staunchly anti-vax right now if i was like wait wait, wait let's let's argue about this. <laughs> no, yeah that'd no, be fun i'd love to argue about that but i was gonna say uh one more thing i forgot to uh forgot to mention uh, bill gondal forgot to mention is he got banned on twitter oh, so yeah got, yeah that's uh you want to talk about that yeah so what happened is like you know from the past three months i was getting flagged on tweets that had been made like what 14 16 months ago so about a year and a half ago i'm like okay that's weird and then somebody uh dm me like a screenshot of this account called hate hunters on twitter and they're basically mass flagging they have like four or five other accounts that coordinate these mass flags and are taken down you know people they don't like especially the people who criticize islam so uh same thing happened with me one fine day you know normally i'd get like you know delete the tweet and your account will be open and you can use it again i'd do that and whatever but then uh yeah, it just got reported so many times, and then just I woke up one day and it was just uh, banned, and it was it was just the same old thing. Like I was talking about how the Quran creates a sense of hate or kafir phobia, and I was trying to explain that to somebody, and that comment just got flagged. I don't know if it was in AI. I did file for review. I don't know what's gonna go on. And uh, Aladdin, you also got banned, right, on TikTok several times now. Oh yeah, more more times than I can count. <laughs> Uh, but I hear <laughs> but that now it it's starting to uh, it's starting to affect um, other atheists too, not just ex-Muslims. So at least we have solidarity there. You know, they can <laughs> relate to us. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it is what it is. Social media mm -hmm. is in some ways against us, but it's not a conspiracy or anything like that. It's just the the incentives are not aligned with our incentives. Our incentive is to get the message out. Our message, the incentives, we don't care about your message. We just want, you know, to make money off, you know, people dancing. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> that's the focus and that's what they're done. But they don't really care about uh, <laughs> anything else. Um, so, should I share the slides then and then we'll just get into it? Yeah, for sure. I okay. think the last time we were on uh, slide 63 out of 101 or something like that. Yep. All right. So, the last one we did was this one, right? okay yeah i remember this one this is about the urine so I, yeah I, i've seen this thing pop up again once in a while where like uh the peculiarity of focusing on urine drops falling on clothes leading to torture and grave like <laughs> what's the big deal but then on the counter end you have these hadith where it says that if a baby urinates on you uh if a male baby does it you just sprinkle some water on it if it's a female baby you gotta wash the whole cloth and whatnot right so there's a little bit of inconsistency like what is like the difference between like baby urine versus human urine is one more filthy than the other one is like worthy of torture and you know islamic science <laughs> yeah and then i mean why the hell is this guy like hearing voices like walking in a graveyard and out of all the things they could have been tortured for the causes yeah they just took a piss in the wrong way oh looks like, <laughs> looks like we just lost aladdin hopefully he'll get him back okay. um, yeah we'll continue on the next slide all right so um, oh, all right uh so this one is uh Oh, this is not me saying it. This is just what the, the slides <laughs> say. Women are dumb and go to hell. Again, in quotation marks from 
Muhammad, the greatest man to ever live, the biggest feminist of all times. <laughs> so the first one, uh, uh, it says that isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? The women said, yes. He said, this is because the deficiency of a woman's mind. <laughs> Now, one thing I want to talk about here is the Arabic of it. And as we know that Aladdin is from Agraba, uh, he's also <laughs> here. <laughs> and uh, so there's a word that they use, I believe it's the Nuqsan Aqliha or Naqisatul Aql, something like that. What does that mean? What does the word Aql entail? Oh, man, that's uh, Aql is, it means literally brain, but it can also entail like the. Um, like how, I, it's hard to translate it between languages, but uh, a person's uh, awareness, maybe, like um, or afala taqilun, for example, yeah. that means uh, do you not think? Um, so it has to do with your your brain in 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 a way. Yeah. Okay. So you think this is kind of trying to straight up say explicitly that women's brains are like deficient compared to men, if you read it in like its literal form in the Arabic. I, I don't know if it means like physically the brains are smaller or deficient in that regard, but it says um, uh, nuqsan means uh, like a reduction or or smaller um, brain, basically. Okay. Um, yeah. Because the word so nuqsan in Urdu exists too, and we use it, it in Urdu? Yeah. in Urdu. It means a loss, like nuqsan ho gaya. He lost okay. it, like he had a big major loss, or he had a big mm -hmm. calamity befall him. But yeah, it's like in a negative sense too. So that's interesting that the kind of the meaning of the word is consistent throughout like the two <laughs> languages. But yeah, and I mean, that's the thing, right? Like when Muslims uh, come up with the counter argument that, oh, the Quran just says you have to stipulate it. It's only for those transactions that you write. Well, no, Muhammad takes it a step further and he's explaining the tafsir. There's no yeah. better mufassir than the prophet himself. And if he's saying that it's generally a deficiency of a woman's mind, it's kind of... Looks really bad. Didn't, didn't Muhammad also do this, like almost the same thing with uh, when he just went up to someone and, and told him, uh, do you know where the sun sets? And the person was like, no, prophet. And then he said, it sets in a muddy spring. Like he explicitly, <laughs> he explicitly said that in a hadith. So whenever apologists say, no, no, the hadith doesn't mean that it means as if, or sorry, the verse means as if sets in a muddy spring and so on. The prophet literally says it in a hadith. This is what I meant to say, mm -hmm. right? So in this hadith, he's literally just saying, yes, it's because she's deficient in her mind. Like, how do you get out of that one? I was going to say, um, when you read the Quran, I, I think this all always boggles people's mind. Why is, you know, one female, why do you need two, two female witnesses or one male, right? And so, like you're saying, this gives confluence. This explanation gives confluence to the, to the, to the reasoning that Muhammad had some messed up ideas about women's intelligence, okay. which is why he did this, why he said this. Because otherwise, you, you're just left scratching your head, like what? Like could it be because of this? Could it be because of this? And you know, scholars do give different reasons. Oh, women are busy with other things, but mm -hmm. like. Women could be in, you know, situations where they do need to give witness too, right? And then now you, you're saying you need two of them. So, like, where did this come from, right? And obviously, everything in the Quran always comes down to what happened in Muhammad's life. So, something happened in Muhammad's life that made him think this way. And this hadith, I mean, we don't know for sure, based on, you know, my understanding. We don't know 100% for sure if Muhammad said this. But this is one possible reason that actually makes sense because it jives with the Quran. It's not like it's not out of place. If the Quran is saying, you know, two two women or one man, well, we don't know why, but now we have a reason that actually makes sense. And from someone who thinks this way, you know, what I'm saying. So if someone thinks that women are deficient of mind, well, therefore a logical conclusion would be, well, you need two of them instead of one man. I mean, it's, it's completely ass backwards because you know we have women. Like I'm, I was watching this Netflix documentary today about the human mind. And some of the brightest minds out there doing research on, you know, neuroplasticity or prosthetic arms. In this episode, it was about, you know, creating a prosthetic arm that can be connected to the, the that uh, someone that lost the arm can actually feel the sensation. And it was a woman. It was a woman doing this. She's in charge of the research team. So it's like, like women are not dumb. Women are not deficient in mind. Women are just mm. as smart as men. 
right? And so this is absolutely ass backwards. Um, Gondola, you, you trying to share something on the screen? Yeah, so another thing that ties in exactly with that is this uh, famous hadith which talks about women being created from the rib of Adam. And in what in very, very frequent report, it says, act kindly toward women for they were created from a rib and the most crooked part of a rib is its top. If you attempt to straighten it, you will break it. And if you leave it alone, it will remain crooked. So act kindly towards them. So this whole idea circles back to the rib being crooked. So they're somehow just created in a way or they're just naturally crooked. And it, for some weird reason, mentions the top part of the rib, which probably is alluding to the head of, or the brain or the aqal, like you said. Uh, again, that just ties in with it. But again, then the other idea is that they didn't think actually the brain does anything or it does a lot. It's actually more of the heart and whatnot, you know. Can't their heart see or their feel? So I don't know, but it's just a weird, interesting, uh, like, you know, a coincidence that he also said that they're created crooked and the top part's just a little broken. <laughs> It's just messed up. Like, it's pretty explicit. Like, guy doesn't, uh, has no chill. <laughs> you actually brought up a good point. The, um, the, the aql, um, I don't think that word means literally the brain, like mm. in the head. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if they understood that because there's this focus on the heart. You know, Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim, God sealed their hearts. Mm. Uh, they, they think that all the emotions and the thinking is happening like down here. So, aql, I don't know if it, necessarily means the actual brain you know yeah. mm -hmm. um before we continue just want to remind everyone to please like the video click right here like the video and if you if you saw the tweet on uh, twitter please retweet it so we can get more people to watch it um and yeah that's all that's all i wanted just a friendly reminder all right let's get to the next slide or actually we are still on that same one do you want me to oh yeah i gotta share the screen one second share screen. Oh, we haven't even started yeah, we just barely <laughs> begun. Uh, lady, Islamic nonsense. Oh, where did it go? It disappeared. One second. Okay, got it. There we go. So I think the one in the bottom is also quite telling. Like talking about what we need to keep in mind is like the whole uh, holistic view. It's not just one line where he's attacking women at. He's attacking them from a the heaven hell perspective he's attacking them from the crooked bone then the witness then their inheritance then them not being allowed to go so as you kind of see that women are pretty cornered in terms of what they're allowed uh in islam but this also affirms like the next one muhammad said i looked into paradise and found that the majority of its dwellers were the poor people and i looked into fire and found the majority of his dwellers were women now, this is quite an explicit statement where this guy is claiming that he went and apparently there's already people in hell. I, th I don't know how time, uh, time dilation and whatnot works in the Islamic uh, <laughs> theology, but he already saw like, and if, if he's seeing the future after the day of judgment, that he's already seen that more, most of the women are gonna be in hell. And uh, if not, like, I mean, he just shows you that it's, it's this weird hatred towards women. Like, like he says, like, like to go to, to go see God and you're seeing all these things and you got to remember that you saw most women in hell. It's just a weird generalization. And that also is weird in a way where we see that is the gender ideology going to be constant till the end of times. Like, for example, back in like 1400 years ago, we had, we had like, or even now still is the male female. But like, as we move forward in philosophy and time progressive and surgeries come up, like the whole idea of, you know, like, male and female is kind of changing in a way where is Islam really meant for all times to come? Will it keep up with modern sexuality when machines join in our body and whatnot? That's just another aspect to it. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Wait, what I, I noticed is that gonna... he talks yeah, go ahead. about... Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, he mentions poor people, right? Being the dwellers of heaven. And then hell is full of women. Like, are all those women rich or... <laughs> Uh, that's a good that, that's question. That's what I want to understand. That's Are they the one percent and simultaneously like the majority of of hell? Well, maybe yeah. that's why he was trying to reduce their inheritance too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe because it's he for their own rich... good, because poor people go to heaven. Maybe because like Muhammad was married to Khadija and she was the the leader in the house, you know, with all the finances and the trade and everything. 
he after that was kind of you know, when she died he was traumatized or something and he got scarred in a way that he just went all out like no more women in business no more this and that i was gonna um i was gonna i want to say something but i want to leave this comment i asked my sheikh how muhammad saw people in hell when judgment hasn't happened mm -hmm. yet his response was time works differently in the hereafter logic works differently in the afterlife too. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and what yeah, i was gonna say what I was going to say was, um, don't you feel like Muhammad is giving incel vibes here? Like his oh, insecurity yeah. with women, his total control. I mean, yesterday I did a live stream where I was I was um, responding to this uh, red pill guy, um, Andrew Tate, and how it's bizarre, you know, as, as famous and attractive and wealthy as he is, he is so insecure about women. And he kept saying, oh, these women are cheating on us nowadays. And this is always about the women's sexuality. And this is exactly, and they, and he was praising Islam. And this is exactly what Islam is all about: controlling women's sexuality. It's almost like Muhammad had like some, in, like you know, big insecurities about sexuality because no one's allowed to see his wives. His wives have to stay behind the curtain. Most of them are going to hell. It's it's like, damn, like was Muhammad the first incel? I mean, obviously he wasn't an incel. He had kids and everything. Well, <laughs> but he he is. Yes. No. No. You're absolutely right. Like remember the hadith that about how many uh, women about. Sorry, uh, sleeping with all of his wives in one night with one listen. Yes. Who, sh who says that? Like, how did that come or to light? Strength of 140 yeah. men or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, who said that? W were his wives just like talking to each other and they're like, hey, how was, you know, sleeping with our husband last night? No. Like, yeah. did he just go to his Sahaba and tell them, by the and, way, I have then, sex very well? Like, <laughs> and then he makes up another story of like the. Prophet Solomon having sex with like 90 wives in one night. Like, come on, guy. What is this erotica? It doesn't make but sense. This is when you think about it uh, in the first, what, 10 years of his life after claiming prophethood in Mecca, he just had one wife who was, what, 15, 20 years older than him. Uh, and then suddenly, as she dies, this guy was 50, by the way, or some, almost 50 something when she died. And all of a sudden, in the last 13 years of his life, in Ibn Kathir's version of the Sira, Muhammad ended up marrying 18 women in total. And then some were divorced. The guy actually, there's reports of six of them being divorced. And some of the incidents are very weird where, uh, you know, what <laughs> Aisha went to one of his wives and said, oh, you know, by the way, Muhammad killed your dad. So she broke up with Muhammad, like this kind of stuff. <laughs> it was petty. It was straight up petty stuff from some of the, some of the stories, you know. Uh, yeah. But you seeing this this weird and like during those last 13 years of his life, when I was calculating adding his slaves and the marriage proposals he rejected and all encounters are like about 30 some sexual encounters. He had like about 20 partners, man at one point yeah. and then when you think about this it was if you calculate there is points in his life where khadija died and within the back to back a month or two later he married aisha and uh, safia Saudi. and yes yeah, Saudi. Saudi. Yeah. yeah like so you see the clear hypersexuality attitude suddenly jump up after khadija died and i have my own theory which, which is we've talked about it before but with the uh, hypo and hypersexuality with the epilepsy not going to get into that today yeah uh, but it's just a very interesting thing. Everybody notices the weird sexuality. And then heaven is like a brothel when there's the worses are like women with big eyes and big boobs. They like, come on, guy. Like it's getting yes, a little too you're much. You're not going like, to believe like on TikTok <laughs> a few months ago. I, I brought that to, to light. You know how how come Allah is just describing a bunch of women for men? And a lot of the women were saying, well, we get to have Hur al -Ain too. I'm like, are you sure about that? Tell me one fatwa. And they were very disingenuous. I'm pretty sure Abdullah Samir is familiar with them, uh, but I'm not going to name anybody. They were basically saying that you can have whatever you want in Jannah, which means women can have men in Jannah. And I just want to envision like a Muslim man and his wife goes, goes up to him in, in Jannah and she's like, okay, so I'm going to go with like five hurlain there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll meet up with you later and, and see if Allah removes the jealousy from their hearts. Like, do you think it works that way? <laughs> well, it's weird because in the in Surah Rahman, it says that Allah has protected the Hurs inside tents from the Lam yat mishunna min al insu wa la jan. And yeah, they're in these very tents. Very protected virgins. Yeah. Yeah. So why would Allah protect the virgins in heaven? Who are they being protected from? I thought in heaven they don't get raped or there's no jealousy. Muslim men. Like, 
<laughs> oh my god. It's it's their hell. It's their version of hell. Yeah, no, I think it oh, means god. protected from yeah, actually that's true. There's only Muslim men and non Muslim But I think it means I think it means protected from the gaze of other men, yeah, obviously, and touching and, and jinns and whatever. Just the gaze jinn. wouldn't have an effect because there's no there's no sin in jinn, there's no bad thoughts. It's, it, nothing makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, we have a call awaiting, but before we do that, I just because this is a call in show, I want to respond mm. to this. Uh, let you guys respond to this. Before Prophet Muhammad, everyone was simply building their daughters alive. There was no limit to polygamy, and daughters got no inheritance. Hmm. Daughters got no inheritance. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mom how? gave all these lights and what? I wonder how Khadija became rich. <laughs> <laughs> she had, they, the women had no rights, but Khadija was running this business. And, you know, she hired, headhunted Muhammad. She even had slaves, men, male slaves working for her as employees. But anyways, and also the thing is, like, it's not Muhammad who is the measure. And it's not just the Meccan society that's the measure. If Muhammad is a man for all time, to come then you can look at the greeks romans the societies before that gave way more rights and privileges to women in many regards than what we found muhammad doing and in fact in that respect muhammad might have given some rights to women but he also limited their freedom in many ways that the earlier arab women had not like for example uh their liberty to divorce. be had, like, divorce yeah, right yeah exactly divorce right going to the mosque being covered all the time in the desert heat like like a there's hadith they would be covered like crows on their head or something so it wasn't a think, you know and we're, we're all missing something i don't even go into these arguments about whether the situation was worse and it got better hmm. it's like okay and then what what happened since then yeah like, it's like we're uh, what about the first car like uh, or, or the ford model t it was one of the first cars that was like mass produced would you drive it today? No, it's a piece of shit, <laughs> right? Like it, it was better than walking back mm -hmm. then, but now we have cars. Like, so now what is the improvement on that? Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's a very like, good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think you said everything that I don't have anything to add to that. Basically, it's possible some things were better, but a lot of things are worse. There, too. there <laughs> are hadith, actually. Uh, women have become emboldened where the women complain or omar complained that the women they were going to the mosque or something right or or they were like the the women they learned from the women of medina to talk back yes or something. yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. he allowed to beat them or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah i found it i found it there you go sahih by al albani it's gonna show yeah you. the main problem the main problem with islamic rights is everything had to do can i just add one more thing okay you hmm. want to sh share this and then i want to add one more thing so uh, women have become emboldened towards their husbands. This is one. Anyway, there's another one where like he goes into the women of Medina are complaining that they've become uh, they've, they've become too haughty and it's a longer version of the hadith. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the whole thing where there was a whole scenario where Muhammad actually allowed women to be beaten because Omar just said, yeah, they're becoming a little too intense with us. So let us beat them. Muhammad said, okay. And then there was a counter complaint. And it's just like a weird, like, why would you even allow domestic violence, period, if you're the prophet of God? It shouldn't be getting... Yeah, he discouraged point. it, is, is what some people say. He discouraged <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. So um, I was going to add one more thing. I'll just make it very quick so we can take the mm -hmm. callers, uh, which is that every single thing that happens in the Quran had to do with Muhammad's life and him in particular. For example... For the witnesses for adultery, that entire thing happened because Aisha was accused of adultery and he wanted her to be innocent. Now, we won't get into whether she was actually innocent. According to Sunni view, she was innocent. According to Shias, she cheated on Muhammad, right? Um, but the Quran says she doesn't. I don't know how they reinterpret that, but the Quran says she's innocent. But the reason for the four witnesses is because of Muhammad and his wife and his wife, you know, potentially cheating on him. So these rules are not meant to help women. They're meant to help Muhammad. Everything in the Quran, including marrying your adopted son's ex-wife, including you can't name your adopted children after you, everything is for Muhammad at the end of the day. In some way, mm -hmm. it's to benefit him. So, like, the point is, some coincidentally, some things might be better for women, but overall, like, it wasn't, that wasn't the purpose of it, right? That never was the purpose. If you guys want to add anything else before I take the call, go ahead. No, I no. think I'm good. We can take the call. Yeah, right? Okay, yeah. awesome. Uh, Moet, how's it going? Oh, hey, how's it going? Nice yeah, to see you, man. Mo, it's Mo, Texas, USA. 
Oh, oh yes. right on. Yeah. And good to see you all three, Aladdin and Abdullah Gondal and Abdullah Samir. And thanks for taking Thank me you. in. Really appreciate it. Y'all do a fantastic job. Y'all do such a great job that if somebody is just neutral, he would actually lean, he will, he will go away running twice as speed uh, <laughs> of light from his mom. Buraksi. Buraksi. Buraksi, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I got so, several questions. And uh, since all three of you are all so knowledgeable, I should ask, I don't know, I got sir, I got many questions actually, but I know time is of a constraint and I don't want to take up all of the callers' time as well. So my simple question, now that we're talking about Khadija and we're talking about Muhammad, and what, what I want to know is that time period between Khadija's death till Aisha or Sada, some references say Sada was the second, some say, or Khala or Sada, uh, Sada I think Sada. And uh, some references say it was Aisha. So between that period, what did Muhammad do? Did he go to sex slaves, concubines, or he was just dormant, or he behaved? I'll start with the answer. So I would say that he was, he, I don't know if he had sex slaves at that point, because he wasn't in, it was still in Mecca, and he didn't have yeah. an army, and the jihad hadn't started yet. He might not have sex slaves, but uh, I don't know if he was dormant, but he had the whole year of grief there. His uncle died, and then shortly after Khadija or his wife was the opposite, but it was in a small time frame, and then I think it was a couple months. Now, I can go quickly check that. If you give me a second, I'll go grab the Rahikul Mukhtum. I had it marked somewhere, but I think it was like two, three months, and he married them within like a month apart or something like that. So I'll go right. confirm that for you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, well, you don't have to. You don't have to because uh, I also kind of know. I knew it from from before. That was only a couple of months. Oh, I yeah. just want to make sure if anybody and you can always search it later on, mm -hmm. and we can talk about. It. Now, um, since Abdullah Gandhi, have you finished your PhD or are you still working on it? No, I'm still working on it. Okay, well, then would be a question for you. Um, <clears throat> there is a, a okay. According to the Muslim history, Muhammad got revelation from God through Gabriel, and he then created the book of Quran, which wasn't in the form of book until 30, 40 years later, 50 years maybe. But in that book, when I read it, and I read with an open mind, and I see that, that Allah is constantly threatening, constantly saying stuff that no human would like and uh, and and to further to go further in that if you look at chapter 55 uh there are about maybe there are about 77 or 78 um, verses altogether within that entire chapter about 28 or 30 or maybe 32 times this one verse is repeated over and over and over <laughs> again. i think exactly exactly yeah yeah so and and also throughout the entire quran you see there is punishment for coffers coffers or you know are the mean people whatever don't you think that this quran if it what was written by god allah wasn't allah suffering from obsessive compulsive disorder exactly so uh that's a very good question and i would love to answer that i discussed this in my initial uh this long presentation we had on his mental health so there's a few things going on now uh muhammad's repetitive uh, phraseology like dr dede kirk actually uh, explained it as well in his book life alert it will be featured in much more detail in the upcoming documentary where he says that these patients uh displayed this thing called hypergraphia and it's pretty consistent like and sometimes it can come out in writing form sometimes they come out in uh, in verbal form and you see that their thoughts get ideated and stuff and there's uh, something called viscosity in speech that develops where they'll and then uh, actually i'll just share my screen because i had just a few slides and there's some papers uh, that i shared as well <laughs> Okay, give me one second. Uh, 
Okay, yeah. So we saw like uh, pe patients uh, poetry coming up uh, in some of the people. And that was like people who had no issues, no affiliation with poetry in the past. They would just start rhyming if they had seizures. Then the thing you mentioned is viscosity and social cohesion. So basically viscous and circumstantial speech develops, which is an obsessive focus and repetition on a small scale of topics with lots of jumping and wandering and thought. And that, like you said, is a very prominent feature of the Quran. He keeps repeating the same thing, but then he'll go on tangents kind of with no really meaning to them come back. Uh, so yeah, this is actually like clinginess and stickiness in, in speech. Um, and then we also talked about, uh, yeah, there's a few examples of compulsive rhyming coming up as well. Now, there are other patients uh, who have had such experiences, and they're actually very, very well known. And I'm going to say one of the biggest scholars of today's world, Karen Armstrong, who has uh, like three, four honorary PhD, Cambridge Dean, PhD, some special PhD that is above, above like a normal doctorate. And uh, she's actually a temporal of epileptic patient. She has this hypergraphia, and she's written so many books. Um, L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, uh, seemed to suffer from something called schizophrenia, according to his wife. And he had hypergraphy. He wrote, like, I don't even know, like a, a thousand books. He has a world record for, for a long time. Fyodor Dostoevsky, in fact, is one of the greatest names in literature, like if you ask anybody they would name him as one of the best writers to have ever existed. And he was an explicit epileptic, temporal epilepsy sufferer, who explicitly discussed Muhammad as a patient suffering from the same disorder he does in his own books. So there are these things, uh, and he could notice the patterns too. And I noticed these same patterns in the initial composition of the first surahs in the Quran, where he just keeps threatening upon threats. And it's like 80% of the first 50 verses revealed were just you're going to burn in hell in this this different form, right? Uh, but we have some experts that are going to join us for the documentary, and they discuss this as well, where why we see this. This threatening attitude also is a symptom of uh, psychosis that develops in epilepsy, and they become verbally violent, and people don't like getting challenged on their delusions. So their immediate reaction is, hey, show me an angel or a sign from God. If you don't believe me? Well, you're going to burn in hell, you know? And we see these things in cult leaders as well. But I think I've, I've gone on for a bit too long on that one. So let's. Yeah, even today, was... even today, the moment you question anything, any tenets of Islam, immediately the the sword or or the gun, and lately the bombs come out immediately as if if you don't agree with you, you're gonna just exp explode as well. Yeah, that's another. Uh, mm -hmm. I got another question about Muhammad's personality. He he seems to be my favorite person. The more I study him, the most. Let me tell you that. So Mo, could I could we save that for later because we want to get to some oh, more sure. slides. So uh, yeah, when we when we invite callers again, do call back in, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. if there's nobody else, then we'll take some but, more questions. Just before you leave, I just want to tell him like uh, if he's interested in this, I'm kidding you not. What I'm preparing is something that is is unprecedented at a scale that has never been done before. It's going to have actual neurologists who were speaking on camera explicitly about Muhammad. Um, there's going to be a panel. There's going to be uh, uh, an ex-Muslim specialist as well in there. So there's that's an interesting perspective too. We're going to go into a lot of depth. And just to tell you that there's so many references, I have about 200 screenshots to put in there. And just to give you an idea, there's, I found like 30 screenshots of him just fainting. He had a fainting problem, right? He And then trembling, there's like 25. Foaming in the mouth, there's like five or six. There's a lot more than, I don't know if this has ever been put out in this form, but uh, it will be very good. Uh, but yeah, just, uh, I hope you're excited for that. <laughs> yes, I'm absolutely excited. And there's another pathology I would like to discuss with you once I come back. Yeah, for Sounds sure, man, 100%. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Bye. All right, so I'm going to go next one. Sorry, my cat's getting in the way here. Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, okay, um, Satan urinates in your ears and sleeps in your nose. Oh, my God. This is in Bukhari and Muslim. This is the most authentic you can get. According to uh, scholars, they call this agreed upon. Agreed upon means the two <clears throat> big giants of Sunni hadith corpus both collected and, and called it sahih. So it's it's like super sahih. <laughs> yeah, super sahih. <laughs> 
<laughs> Abdullah bin Masood reported, uh, blah, blah, blah. A man who slept throughout the night till morning, Messenger of Allah remarked, he is a man in whose ears Satan urinated. I mean, I don't know if he's trying to show this as like a figure of speech or a euphemism for something, but like, it's just a weird expression. Like again, the urine pops up. Why the hell is the urine always going up there? <laughs> right. And it's interesting. And if somebody doesn't hear the Adhan, you know, back in the day, they didn't have alarm clocks or something. Why do you have to say that? Like, I just don't get it. Is there something in Arabic, like the way they spoke or is there like some sayings like this that are <laughs> well it would be an ancient like, it would probably be a reference yeah, it would that be a would be I, today. I yeah. That. No. yeah well i guess um, Sat satan has a lot has a weird interest in like our anatomy <laughs> eh? like <laughs> those <laughs> alien abduction stories <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the Why second one was urinating. And uh, what, what was that hadith about uh, him farting, farting his way? <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, oh. when one of you wakes up from his sleep, he must blow off his nose three times for Satan spends the night inside one's nostrils. Interesting. You yeah, that is, that is interesting. It is a good habit, you know, like when you wake up, like you clean your nose and stuff, but like you don't have to add that superstitious nonsense layer on it like you could just say that because it's a good habit you know mm -hmm. but i guess people need a, a supernatural incentive because the way their minds work so <laughs> satan needs to cut down on his oil hydration <laughs> yeah man how many people does he piss in every night <laughs> wait the surah kaf says he has an army of you know those little genes so there's a like <laughs> army of like Devil just sitting over people's beds waiting to pee in their ear every morning. No, no, they whisper in your ear first. They're like, shh, it's going to be okay. And then <laughs> Maybe this is uh, someone where, uh, where Muhammad Hijab that? gets his golden shower from. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think Jim Satan. <laughs> man, oh. it's like when you look into this, it's just like, oh man, it's hilarious. It's weirdly sexual. I'll give it that. <laughs> yeah, that is Muhammad. True. Um, oh, so, that's farting. You want to? Okay, <laughs> yeah. So basically, Shaitan. These, I mean, these hadith are well known as like the the most bizarre hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Here's another one that he basically, you know, when the call to prayer is made, he he goes flying off in a fart jet, like you know, supersonic, <laughs> uh, supersonic, you know, and then is he comes it, back. <laughs> is that? What were they the... smoking? What were they smoking? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was the UFOs, you know, with no method of propulsion. They're just going since they're the top of the town today. But this one, I remember one of the weirdest thing was Dr. Jonathan Brown tried to explain this hadith, right? And he gave this weird explanation that uh, Satan farting is a euphemism for uh, horses farting when they run super fast. So back then, they <laughs> used to use horse and they run fast, they'd fart, something along those lines. Therefore, He's running away fast, not that he's literally farting. But then once it's, it's, it mentions it, he says it, he comes back in the masjid and, you know, and then he's trying to distract people while they're praying. Now, what I don't get is if the words of the adhan are making him so scared that he has to run away, how can he come back into the mosque where those same words are almost being repeated in just a slightly different format and those words suddenly don't affect him? Like the Allah Akbar in the in the that uh, speaker or the Adhan is fine, but when they do this in the Salah, it's not gonna affect the Satan, you know. That's well, a great they, point. I think they actually believe that if they believe that saying some words will make the Shaitan go away, why don't they just play them on a loudspeaker on a loop, like on the exactly. street? Exactly. Can would I go tell down. you? Can I tell you a story about that? Can I, guys? Sure. Um, my friend who's a psychiatrist told me that. I mean, I actually helped him with this. We made this little. CDs of Surah Bakra, which he used to give to his clients to play 24 7 in the house because it kept Shaitan away. Like he's like an actual psychiatrist, like a doctor. Mm -hmm. And he was he thought this was helping his patients, giving them CDs of Surah Bakra playing. And of course, we couldn't back in the day, CDs, I don't know if you guys are too young to know this, but there was a limited 74 minutes or maybe 80 minutes per CD, yeah. and Surah Bakra is longer than that. <laughs> so we had to like speed it up. Like that, like that. <laughs> but like you said, it's fine. It's still playing. It's still playing. So a bucket in your house, like your house will be blessed, right? So oh like God. this computer, this uh, not computer, but like yeah, I guess you could say this micro, mini device, electronic device is like basically converting the little dots on the CD player to sounds and broadcasting it to vibrations in the air. And apparently, Shaitan doesn't like. He doesn't like that or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's kind of funny. Like, it's so almost a, like the same circuit. issue with. Hmm? Sorry, a circuit can do dhikr then. A circuit can read Quran. <laughs> Who, who's yeah. taking the hasanat here? The wait, person wait a second. Play? The AI. What if the AI does it? <laughs> <laughs> wait a second. Now, this is an actual question I just popped in my head. If AI does become conscious, does the AI also get judged by Allah on the Day of Judgment? <laughs> is, is it per thread? Like per well, each Hassan, AI? <laughs> Hassan Radwan actually asked a similar question about like cavemen, basically uh, proto, proto humans. Mm -hmm. Could they, should they be judged? Because the kind of human, like they kind of can think and bashing head, you know, like the Flintstones, <laughs> they have a club, they hit a guy on the head, they take his woman by the hair and pull it like those type of humans, like would they be judged like going to heaven and hell? Like, do they have like cavemen prophets? And <laughs> you know what I mean? there were like 124,000. So maybe there were Neanderthal prophets or <laughs> Denisovan, they're Homo erectus, Homo habilis, all had their own prophets, man. <laughs> I was going to make a joke and be like, oh, they pray to a stone like the in the primitive times. And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Wait, they still do it. They still do it, man. They just think they're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Muhammad's greatest hits, beat it, careless whispers to the moon and <laughs> I drove all night. <laughs> On a yeah. Uh, yeah they, they, uh, uh, well, let's continue. Uh, yeah. The breathing of hell causes winter and summer. Oh boy. It's pretty hot. So let's hear this one. That the messenger of Allah said, the fire complained to its Lord. It said, some parts of me consume other parts. So he allowed it to take two breaths, one during the winter and during the summer. As for the breath in the winter, then it is Zamharid. And as for the breath in the summer, then it is Samum. So basically, <laughs> hell breathes and that breathing releases hot or cold air, which causes seasons. Now, I don't even know where to begin, how freaking wrong this is, like how the scientific like the tails of the earth and the rotation and the two hemispheres actually have different seasons going on different times so i don't know how this will be like the hell is accompanying like one hemisphere gets the cold breath the other one gets the warm one at the same time uh a lo lot of this would make more sense on a flat earth too, exactly. right? yeah right. i was like, gonna say though just to be just to be fair i'm gonna make this point because i don't want someone to say that we're doing we're doing something wrong these hadith are unfalsifiable. Like, let's be clear. Like, what what metaphysical heaven and hell breathing, fighting devils, um, you know, like, and some of the other ones we're gonna get to as well. They're not, they're not like strong points against Islam being false, but they are in 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 summary, in collection, all of them combined do show you how ridiculous and absurd Islam is. Because when you look at everything all together you start to realize this is coming from a deranged mind. But we're not saying Islam is false because heaven and hell, you know, causes... That doesn't even... That's not, that's not even falsifiable. Like, that yeah. that could be true. We don't know, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make... It's not something you can test. But there are other things you can test which are, you know, obviously false. So Satan sleeping in nose and stuff like that. You know, we're just showing you how absurd it is to hopefully kind of, like, kick someone and make them wake up and say, Whoa! This is what I believe is from God. No, this is not from God. This is from a like a mm. like a you know from a from a strange mind, right? That, that's, that's <laughs> I, just I have something I want to say about that, by sure. the way, um, because I always get people like I would make a sketch about whatever verse or whatever situation, and on TikTok, for example, and people would come up to me and be like, "Do you think that disproves Islam?" I'm like, "Do you think I was trying to disprove Islam in 15 seconds?" No. <laughs> Uh, I was trying to make a joke, like we're talking about the shaitan farting, and that's what your prophet said. Like, just enjoy <laughs> the laughs, you know. Like, is your defense really that the farts don't bring down my religion? Like, really <laughs> contextualize it for a second. Exactly. Like, it's like the defense. What are we reading up. here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are we even talking about? Like, it just feels so surreal. Some like heaven and hell, breathing farting devils. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, fever is also due to the heat of hell. There goes all... it's an <laughs> infinite power source. It's it's a I don't know. It's renewable like what energy right there. Nuclear fusion reactor. Allah's got up yep. there, man. <laughs> yeah, fever is the heat of the hellfire, so abate fever with the water. 
That's, so I don't know what he means here. Like, if is the is it is like hell like being afflicted upon you with its heat as a punishment or a test? No, or I, if, I think he's just telling us like there's more of this to come. Like this is just you're feeling the actual effects of the real hell. So you know that's evidence that there's hell. Sca- oh, so he's scaring us here. Mashallah, I, I think so. Uh, that's just you know don't quote me on this. We're just hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop the show. Someone has a question. Isn't fear just your body is raising your body temperature when it attempts to combat pathogenic microorganisms? Exactly. There's also like we even know like it's no, 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 brother, sister. It is, it's <laughs> your wrong. lymph nodes are from hell. Your this is not <laughs> why Quranic science 101 comes and from hell. <laughs> Dr. Zakir Naik, MBBS. <laughs> <laughs> Like you know, one thing one thing I don't get is if he's saying abate fever with water. Does that mean you can turn off the hellfire with water as well? <laughs> <laughs> with the biggest river in Jannah. Can, can I use my river that way? Can I like Fire, firefighters from Jannah? That's a new <laughs> no. new show. Remember? Can I just combine and... all my tokens for Jannah and like get the biggest river? You know, like cashing out at an arcade, Wait, the biggest what? river, and pour it into hell. <laughs> But no, they did that in Surah Araf when those guys in the oh. in the middle are like Tafidu an alayna al ma something like that. They Give pour upon us some water and the help uh, the heaven people say, No, we cannot. And yeah, they just kind of like taunt them that you keep on burning. And I'm like, what the f- weird torture scene is this, man? <laughs> like Oh yeah, I, I talked about that verse about the um uh Ladina Amanu min al Kufari al Hakun when they're laughing at them. Mm-hmm. And all the responses were like, well, you laughed at us first. So I'm like, what are you talking about? You're in heaven. How childish is this like playground mentality of you laugh yeah. first? It's I'm like burning, Allah, you know? It's like Allah is like a teenage immature child who gets like really ticked off and triggered. Like Dabu Surah Lahab. <laughs> and then yeah. like all these threats coming up. Like, come on. He's toxic masculinity. You just, uh, you know, personified. <laughs> like that. Allah is yeah. threatening us with fever. That's what, he, that's what hell is, bros. <laughs> It's, oh, not, no. it's not hell, it's fever. <laughs> it's COVID. Almost COVID. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. <laughs> All right. The Prophet said, okay. isn't he who raises his head before the Imam afraid that Allah may transform his head into that of a donkey or his, fig- or his figure face into that of a donkey? Okay, this is just weird. Like, what? Wait, is I, like, I know he had it in Arabic. Yeah, because like, that? yeah, look, look it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this is a, 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 alluding again to the Quran, right? Where people were turned into donkeys and apes, mm-hmm. uh, ape swine and apes, basically, right? So yeah. this is the same. And I, I remember he's reading a, another hadith about looking up to the sky and Allah will snatch away your sight. Eyes as well, I never yeah. really got that. Like, I don't get the point of that. Wait, like, one yeah. second. It's, it says here, uh, who lifts his head before the imam. Does that mean during prayer? Like yes. before the imam yeah. is done? Okay. Yeah, like you're, you're too fast to get up. And God <laughs> makes your head like a donkey. What kind of... It's weird, like maybe, when maybe that's how we got the Egyptian gods, like back in the day, like, <laughs> the cat face, you know. It's weird that Muhammad fixates and picks on an animal. The braying of the ass is the worst voice that Allah has created. Then there is, if you look up in prayer, you get turned into a donkey. But then he also would ride a donkey everywhere in the hadith, right? Muhammad maybe had it's a... one of the Sahaba who looked up too quickly. <laughs> 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 There's a story in Sira ibn Kasira, I remember. I don't know if it's Sahih or not, but the talking donkey, a Khaybar. <laughs> Muhammad had a conversation with the donkey. <laughs> Maybe hey, it's one of the Spaniards. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Oh, man. oh this right. is the next one you were, I was oh, just thinking. Exactly, of. yeah. <laughs> I'll um, let Aladdin read this one. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. The Prophet said. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what is wrong with these people who look towards the sky during the prayer? Uh, I don't know. They're meditating, dude. Uh, his thought What's grew stern. Like, why does he have such an issue with it? Like, can, like God is up there, right? Yeah. Don't look at his eyes directly. Is he autistic or something? <laughs> okay, that's not nice. That's me. 
<laughs> no, no, it's, 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 it's serious. Like, is he uncomfortable with <laughs> eye contact? Is what I meant. This is not a dig <laughs> yeah. at any group of people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's anyway, <laughs> his heart <laughs> grew stern while delivering his speech, and he said, "They should stop looking towards the sky during the prayer. <laughs> Otherwise, their eyesight would be taken away." <laughs> Yeah, you were talking about this, like the violence, <laughs> but the, like otherwise, you know, I'm gonna come for you. Hell is gonna come for you. Yeah, it's, like, it's, this guy doesn't leave like torture and threats out anywhere. Like he's like, you know, you're gonna get tortured in the grave. You take a piss the wrong way, you go to grave, you get tortured. You look up, <laughs> Yo, your like, eyes are gone. You look up again. This is like and... this. This is like a parent that doesn't know how to parent his kids. <laughs> like I, I'm gonna like you know you're gonna get this like every little thing. I'm gonna like beat you senseless, or you know if you go, someone's gonna kidnap. You know you know that some parents. Yeah, yeah. If, I, if you eat food the before you go into the pool, like you're gonna die. That kind of stuff. They make up. They make up stuff to scare the kids because they yeah. don't know how to parent properly. Like I don't. I don't lie to my kids like that. Like I tell them straight up, honest truth, and that's it. And they, I treat them like adults. And you know. Much, obviously to some extent I don't tell them everything but this is just like you don't know how to be a leader if you're doing this this is just but like at some point wouldn't the companions be like this doesn't this never this doesn't happen <laughs> like this never happened yet like okay because, is it gonna maybe he's just staring at the sun for too long and he's like oh, <laughs> I did that once <laughs> I guess this was really funny we're talking about the donkey thing there's a hadith that says I saw the messenger of Allah praying on a donkey while he was facing Khaybar. So the guy was sitting on a donkey while praying. But then he's always telling us, wait a second, the, the worst, the brain of the ass is the worst voice Allah created, right? Uh, the, yeah. So what if Muhammad's praying and the donkey starts braying? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, this guy was like... That would be very peeved by it, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, all right. Oh, I think we lost Samir. Well, I guess he'll be back. Oh, right, you know what? What I will do? Oh, no, there he is. Back. All right, never all right. mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Giant oak tree in heaven. Okay, so we know like trees have like this attachment with mythology where the tree of life and stuff come up, and there's like the low tree, the Sidrat al Muntaha, but the trees has these colors fluttering out of it in heaven. And it goes from the seventh heaven or the sixth heaven into the end or something like that. But anyways, this one's different. In paradise, there is a tree under the shadow of which a writer can travel for a hundred years without covering the distance completely. And then this hadith, blah, blah, blah. In paradise, there is a tree under which a rider of a fine and swift-footed horse. Like it's the best horse to travel for a hundred years without covering the distance completely. So I'm just trying to do the math in my head right now. Okay, if we calculate the rough speed of the best horse we have per second or a kilometer per hour. hour. Yeah. Kind of and then times that by 24, times that by how many days in a year, times that by 100 years. Holy shit. This, <laughs> how big is this tree? <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? You know that story of the giant? The, the uh uh, when when they they um, plant the two seeds and then the the tree goes up to giant heaven or something. Oh, yeah, the Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah, Fee yeah, the Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what this reminds me. Of. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, maybe Adam will be up there and like all the giant prophets are up there. <laughs> <laughs> so they need giant trees to chill with, chill under. <laughs> yeah, they need giant trees. Uh, I'm oh. just gonna read some of the comments. Um, what about the sh shoes of fire that'll boil the brain? Yeah, apparently that's the least punishment in Hellfire, right? Yeah, so if they'll boil the brain, they'll probably boil and burn everything else on the way till the heat kind of reaches up to that point, right? <laughs> so it's kind of pointless. <laughs> yeah, that, that is kind of weird. That is weird, actually. Is. That's a good point. That's a good point. Why yeah. Why the brain? Like, what, what about the rest it's, of the body? The heat, okay, heat rises. It'll travel up the body. If the source is at the feet, the feet the are going to burn first. And the, the blood, blood gonna is going to go up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, the it's blood, like yeah. reverse of like water cooling computers. It's the opposite. It's it, it's like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, instead of just putting like shoes and slippers, why can't Allah make the brain just bubble without the shoes? <laughs> so it's for theatrics, he's yeah. a very theatrical man. Yeah, he's dramatic. So the next comment says for the God that supposedly created an entire universe, he sure is obsessed with very really odd details about the featherless bipeds on a large rock spinning around a star. Yeah, good point. 
Yeah, it's true. Right? Yeah. It's just like bizarrely like, um, okay, now back to the looking at the sky. Your eye will shoot laser to the sky. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or like the, the guy from X-Men, if he takes his glasses off, the red things come out. <laughs> That's how he split the moon. Oh. He was looking at the moon and it just like cracked it in half. Oh, oh wait, this is interesting. This is an interesting comment. The brain doesn't have pain receptors. <laughs> Yeah, That's exactly. A good one. Yeah. There's yeah. also the concept of phantom limb where people are having pain in limbs that don't exist. <laughs> right? So there's it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's make no sense whatsoever. <laughs> okay. Allah has a jail. Oh boy. Okay, so we this is a famous hadith everyone knows that in um Ramadan the basically Allah okay, I'll just read it. When the first night of Ramadan comes, Satan's and mischievous jinns are chained up gates of fire are closed and none of his gates are opened and the gates of paradise are open and none of its gates are closed so basically um in ramadan apparently i mean now again do we want to take this as allegorical literal it depends right literally it makes no sense because a lot of crime and stuff still happens in ramadan even allegorically there's still i i guess muslims do less crime in ramadan because they're busy with other things is that even true i, I i've heard the opposite i've heard there's more fighting there's more tempers being, you know, fled. It depends. I mean, uh, I don't know I, if you want to count that as crime, but uh, I, I'm, I'm sure like crime does go down because people are too hungry and tired and like maybe they're even scared. Like they think it counts more during Ramadan. Yeah. Like it's worse. Al-Ashr al-Haram, you know, you can't, you can't do that. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's why. Yeah. But it's just weird. Like it would make s the whole concept of Satan is weird, right? Like, there's enoughs, there's a good enoughs, the bad enoughs. There's like, there's cells inside you, and they have different trajectories or pers many personalities. I mean, well, what about people with like multiple personalities? Do they I know, have, right? Like, like, multiple copies, like of a bad nafs and nafs al suit for each single person. Exactly. Yeah. But you think about it from the psychological or scientific, it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. None of it does. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Another famous uh, Bukhari oh, hadith. Oh, my God. The infamous camel urine. <laughs> yeah. This hadith is uh, bad in two different ways. One way is that the climate of Medina did not suit some people. So this is actually n known as part of the sila that when they moved from Mecca to Medina, a lot of them had health issues. So it was difficult for them, right? Um, so the prophet ordered them to follow his shepherd. So I guess a bunch of people came and were, uh, were complaining to a prophet. I don't think they were from Medina, they're from outside, right? And so he ordered them to follow his shepherd, um, drink their milk and urine. So they followed the shepherd, that is the camels, and drank their milk and urine until their bodies became healthy. Um, I'm pretty sure the bodies would have got healthy much faster if they didn't drink urine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then, then they killed the shepherd and drove away the camels when the news released the prophet. Now this part is also bad. He sent some people in pursuit and he cut off the hands and feet and the eyes were branded with heated pieces of iron. Ooh, that was quite a harsh punishment. You know, the worst thing about this hadith is the apologetics that I've heard. Like, I've lost hope in a lot of people hearing what they had to say about this. Because once you've gotten to a point of justifying torture, like, I, I, I don't know if I can trust you as a person anymore. You know, whatever logic you took to reach there. Like, I've heard the, I don't know what you guys heard. Like, what is the excuse for this? I'll let you go first. Oh. I've heard one excuse, which is that um, there's a type of um, hormone taken from the urine of horses that when it's used, it can actually benefit in some way or something. But the, the point that they're missing... No, no, I was is, talking about the torture. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's what was on my mind. Yeah. The, the point they're missing about the, the camel urine thing is like urine as a whole with all of its impurities and you know toxins and everything is bad. It's possible that some animals could have certain things you could extract out and, you know, that. But, yes, in regard to the second part of the hadith, um, I've heard that, you know, they took advantage and they killed his people. So this was a punishment. And he just wanted to make sure that nobody else would um, would do this ever again to any of his companions. So he, he, he made an example out of them. Yeah, but that's when they say that that's very dangerously close to what other, you know, organizations are doing these days, like without naming any names. Yeah. <laughs> ISIS. <laughs> the Egyptian yeah, god ISIS. <laughs> I'm talking about the Egyptian god. 
<laughs> like there weren't there verses about crucifixion as well like i remember that was one of the the excuses given for crucifixion um that w i remember reading an explanation that said it's to scare other people so that you know it's a warning basically to the other people so if muhammad did this as a warning and crucifixion is as, as a warning so we're justifying torture to scare people like mm -hmm. there's a word for that that i don't want to say on live stream but <laughs> add block know. the detective like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I, have <laughs> I have something to share as well. Um, actually, I just want to. This is what I was thinking of. I was thinking of this article on Wiki Islam that actually mentioned that increases in blood crimes and thefts were observed during Ramadan, and it, and they have references actually for all of these. Um, Ramadan saw a rise in violent crime. Daily News Egypt, D director of Jakarta's police crime unit, said that they need to be alert as crimes tended to increase during the fasting month especially robberies, right? This oh, was wow. in uh, the Jakarta Globe 2009. Um, this is interesting examples. I don't want to generalize and say this applies to all countries. I will, I will tell you one story about Ramadan in Egypt, <clears throat> which is when I was in Egypt, I went to Egypt for a short amount of time, and I saw people getting to fist fights on the street during Ramadan. I didn't see it outside of Ramadan. In Ramadan specifically, I saw fights from my balcony in my apartment. So... I think I think it. it uh, anyways, yeah, I I think it does cause a lot of issues. Um, I don't know why we're talking about this. What what was the main point we were? Shaitan discussing? being locked up. Oh yeah, Shaitan oh, yeah, being yeah. locked up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there you go. So this debunks. Like how how do you want to interpret that? However you want to interpret no, it's, it. It's, it's just... a nafs al amar bil su. It's still the yeah, people is bad. Uh, See, here's the thing. Even the satyrs locked up because they're dehydrated. Yeah, exactly. They're hangry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coming oh, back to the camel. This is a great point. Oh, yeah. You want me to share your screen after yeah. I read the comment? Yeah. yeah, you read the comment first. Okay. Helen Islam doesn't seem too efficient. I feel like an is <laughs> omniscient God could think of better ways to make humans feel pain in boiling water. Even he efficiency. Could put us in a VR. He could just like put <laughs> VR on us and two probes and like he's torturing us. Yeah. We're done. I, I think it's the incentive or the goal isn't to like torture us efficiently, it's to torture us in the most theatrical <laughs> way to scare us, right? <laughs> That's the point. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, and the, you know, the you whole know, like thing... that boiling pot, like that trope in in cartoons, like jump into the boiling pot kind of thing. Yeah. That's that's what it's literally though. Allah will pour the boiling oil on their heads, and that will cause their bowels to blow up. Is this the worst, right? <laughs> yeah, it's this is yeah. But anyways, uh, talking about camel urine, why that's a bad advice? Because Muhammad was literally being stupid when he gave that advice. Because <laughs> part of the World Health Organization, MERS is caused or has been transmitted by camel urine. And you can What's see MERS? the headline. Middle Eastern Respiratory Middle Syndrome. Eastern respiratory. Funny so enough, it's, like it's, a COVID it's, it's a co novel coronavirus. So it's one uh, of the variant types. So camel urine can get make it worse. Stop breaking it. And it's actually <laughs> mentioned that it straight up says... It's consumed in some parts of the Middle East for <laughs> allegedly palliative property. And I mean, yeah. you can see it's like everywhere. You can look it up. MERS, camel urine will pop up. But yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to share that. That it's just terrible advice. Like it's unhealthy, unhygienic. And Muslims should stop trying to diss on Hindu people because they're for drinking cow urine because they're doing the other opposite. It's the camel urine. And I kid you not, you can literally go on YouTube and you'll find these Salafi guys going to Hajj, and then they're like groups of these, and they'll be from the U.S., they're like Western Muslims drinking camel urine in Saudi Arabia. Man. They sell it in bottles, like packaged bottles, like the shops dedicated to camel urine. I'm not and, even, uh, I just can't imagine. Saying. They're like, cheers I, to that, bro. Clink. Uh, like, <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember reading uh, somewhere, I, I think this was a camel urine issue, or was it a cow urine? I don't know, one of the two. Where the, the shopkeeper was arrested because he was selling his own urine. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, he wasn't even bothering oh, to go God. to the, whether it was a cow or the camel. He's just like, doo -doo 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 -doo, free money. <laughs> <laughs> I got these clowns buying from me. Um, like, Abdul, dude, hmm? they're, they're actually like brands and shit. <laughs> camel <Yes>, urine. <laughs> No, I gotta share this. Can you man. imagine them going to like an Islamic pub, right? And they have like a big mug of like Zamzam water <laughs> with a little <laughs> shot of camel urine. <laughs> and they just like clink and they let it fall. I mean, look at this. There's like brands. <laughs> like they said, this is the video I've seen, by the way. Oh, yeah, God. yeah, yeah. A drink like, uh, anyway, it's, I, I'll stop sharing it now, but <laughs> yeah, you get the point. There, it's... <laughs> yeah, I just want to be fair 
and tell you guys, tell everybody that I don't know anyone who drinks camel urine. Let's be fair. This oh, is yeah, a yeah. weird let's, let's as clear. weird AF hadith. Yeah. Nobody. This is, I this know, is not no a diss about Muslims. Yeah. This is not a diss about Muslims. It's just I know of yeah. a few people who did it. Yeah, right. So oh there's I'm not gonna name names because obviously you know. Uh, there was a student, well, like not a student group, it was a pretty prominent Pakistani group, and like there's always Salafi leaning, and some guys were very Salafi leaning, going to Medina University and all that stuff. So they obviously came back really proud that they accomplished the Sunnah, and you know, but yep, yeah, that, that's where it is. Royal okay, P. So, <laughs> yeah, that was the brand. <laughs> I'm sorry to say your friends are more backward than my Muslim friends. <laughs> Bro, I, I, my, my friends are from they're in Pakistan, so you gotta yeah. kill yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's true. I, I feel like the Muslims in Canada are a little bit different. They're not they're yeah. more they're not they're not gonna do that. It's just like they might justify it and like argue against you when you say that it's bad, be, but they'll never themselves do it. Yeah. Like Ali I wonder Ali Dawa, like Ali Dawa type personality, like if someone forced him to drink it. Maybe he would. Like you that know, would be like a good social this. experiment. Let's do this. Let's start making it trending on Twitter. Muslim camel urine challenge or TikTok. No, <laughs> I don't want to. The reason no, I don't like this camel urine thing is because it's all it's too quickly used as a racial, almost yeah. like a like a big yeah, 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 exactly, slur against yeah. Muslims. Oh, you camel drinkers! Like it's it's the like first the and most drinker, yeah. yeah. It's the most easiest thing to use against Muslims. And it's it's like nobody I know ever did that, and you know a couple of people, but <laughs> I mean like yeah okay a couple of people, but I, I but but yeah like in in terms of making a point, if we could do it without being like you know like like getting to the level of some of these people, do you really believe your prophet? We should call it do you really believe your prophet challenge? But I'm worried some people might actually drink it, and like what's the net benefit then? Well, actually well, make like, people sick, right? Like the, the poison challenge, like a lot of Christians try to do it, like even oh believe God. in Jesus and. Who was that guy? Salah Rashid was trying to drink the poison in a debate, like very no. recently. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He drank a bottle apparently in a debate with some Christian guy to prove that Islam oh is true and Christianity is false. It happened in the UK live on camera. <laughs> what an idiot! Sorry to say it. It. That is so dumb. Oh my god. Okay. Anyways, yeah. again, I I just gonna be clear one more time, guys. Don't bring up camel drink. Don't bring up camel piss drinking. It's it's so like petty and vulgar and we're just, this is just one of the examples. We're not like, we have other things too, right? That's why we brought this is in there, but don't, don't use this. This doesn't work against Muslims. It's just, it's just going to cause them to shut down and say like, you guys are just like making fun of us now and you're not really interested in dialogue. You know, well, I, there's so yeah. many more, there's so many other things you can bring up, right? Yeah. But yeah. There's, like, I mean, what we're doing is kind of like doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so, a fake? Okay. <laughs> he brought it with yeah. him, right? Like, I saw brought him, brought it with him, I believe. Okay, so it was a fake, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Fake, fake poison or a fake clip? Fake poison. I have the video. It's, uh, oh, February he drank fake poison to prove his profit. Oh, my yeah. God. The, the <laughs> dates thing. It was, it was about the dates thing, I think. The it seven, seven, seven dates. dates. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Uh, I, okay. I've spoken about this hadith before, by the way, the urine one. And I speak about the second half of the hadith is what I'm trying to speak about. Oh, yeah, yeah, about. yeah. And people would come to uh, to defend the hadith saying urine has these good properties. And I'm like, that's <laughs> Habibi, that's not the point. <laughs> I'm not even talking about the urine. Leave yeah. that aside. That's just funny. But yeah. Another thing, yeah. like this comes up, and this might come up again with the fly dipping hadith, is they'll take these obscure uh, researches that are done with a huge bias by some of the Muslim researchers in like University of Iran or something. In Saudi University. Yeah. Too, and yeah. what they were yeah. doing was they were looking at the urine and they were isolating a compound, purifying the compound, and then seeing its effects on it. Uh, but they weren't like just dropping urine everywhere. And the ones they did that, they saw that it was toxic towards biological cells if you just put unpurified urine on shit it's not good as a as a as a thing to consume and we also saw from like the mers being caused by it and whatnot anyways enough yeah. camel urine medicine <laughs> yeah yeah and that's what i was saying about like there's all sorts of things in medicine that like sometimes unconventional even that the one about the horse urine that i told you that there's a certain um hormone I think it's like estrogen or something like replacement therapy or something. They don't even use that anymore. Now they just use like an artificial one. Mm -hmm. um, but there's even another more strange, even more strange cure um, for some people that had, there was an example of a lady I saw in a documentary that she had this 
she got sick. She got really sick. And she had like massive diarrhea to the point that she was going to die. And guess how they made her better? They took some feces from a healthy person and they put it inside her. And the bacteria, the healthy bacteria, her bacteria levels were all screwed up in her in mm. intestine. So this actually um, made made her better. So like that doesn't mean you go and eat shit. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, like exactly. have some nuance here, right? And oh yeah, exactly. here, Beach. Thank you, Beach. This is what I was trying to say. Pregnant male urine for insulin. So there is, but that's not the same thing as camel urine, right? Anyways, I think like you said, we've uh, <laughs> Yeah, like here's the thing. Like in, in human history, people have in different regions of the world have experimented with different peas. And, <laughs> <laughs> and some of them are good, but some of them aren't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. <laughs> Chickens can see angels, donkeys can see Satan. So KFC is halal. <laughs> <laughs> but donkey meat is not. <laughs> the prophet said, when you hear the crowing of the roosters, then ask Allah of his bounty, for verily they have seen an angel. When you hear the braying of a donkey, then seek refuge. For rarely it has seen a shaitan. So why is Muhammad riding on top of an animal that's braying all the time and he's seeing Satan? I don't get it. <laughs> it's it's he a radar. It's a warning system. It. No, it's a warning system. Us. When he makes a noise. <laughs> oh, he knows the shaitan's around. Okay, okay. More yeah. the, more <laughs> Yo, this is so cool. Well, what about like donkeys what, what brain? The, the Satan detector. <laughs> What, what if the animal's just excited or, or aroused or something? Like, why does it have to be that he detected the presence of an invisible thing? You know, this, now that I'm thinking, this guy was completely nuts. The babies cry because the, a, Satan is pinching newborn babies. The, this guy's braying the donkey. Them a purple he's... Nipple. <laughs> like, what? like, what is this okay. guy's head like? He's, hey, chickens are seeing angels. <laughs> Here's another one. Like, Imagine How donkeys that? like donkeys hungry, and he's like, "Shut up, donkey! Stop making noise!" <laughs> it's like you're know, getting devils here. <laughs> it's like, what if it's hungry? Like it's just like you know, like you said, if it's like Holy excited. Shit. Or whatever, this, is, right? this is some really dumb shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Yawning is from Satan, and if anyone of you yawns, you should check his yawning for if any one of you. During yawning, say, ha, Satan will laugh at me. What? <laughs> Just let him laugh. That, but... like... Oh, it's saying if you say, oh, like that? Is that what it means? Yeah. Yeah. yeah when you go, oh. Wait, no, guys. I know there's a hadith that says if you yawn with your, like, without covering it, Satan's going to pee in your mouth. Yeah. No, yeah, he's going to go in your mouth. Okay. He doesn't pee in your mouth. goes in your mouth. The pee is yeah. for the fudge. Something like it's. I can't believe you said that with a straight face. <laughs> Sorry, like, no, no, no. The P is about something. Else. I just, yeah, like Satan must laugh a whole lot. Fuck, there's everybody doing some weird shit, so he's always he's, laughing. <laughs> he's he's peeing and laughing and peeing. We should make a we should make a music video. Shaitan laughing. Oh, 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 oh. We're all like yawning. <laughs> there's like devils laughing. <laughs> Like, why oh, do I man. care if the devil's laughing at me? I can't even hear him. Like that doesn't make any <laughs> what, sense. Think about what Satan is. Like, okay, Satan now shits, he pees, he farts, he has a digestive system because he eats dung in his bones. He laughs, so he probably has a mouth and vocal cords. He can what else can he do? <laughs> what can't he do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what can't he do? Yeah, someone said uh, earlier that Satan uh, is playing God mode or something. That's kind of true, <laughs> isn't it? <Cheat> coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has all these powers. And the hadith say he travels in your body like blood, so he can basically influence you like spiritually from afar or kind of possess Why you. Say me? Like that's I, I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with that. With what? <laughs> <laughs> Satan being inside our blood, like flowing oh. through our veins. <laughs> but Michael, then Allah is also like that too, right? That's interesting. That's that bro He's everywhere. That's, that's just, Allah is predicting nanobots. You know the little <laughs> the little robots that go inside your your blood and they cure you for diseases. They clean your fat and from yeah. your cholesterol. Shaitan, shaitan is a is a, a nano nanotechnology is predicted in the Quran fourteen hundred <laughs> oh years god. ago. Oh my god! Oh. It's all aliens. It's all aliens yeah. all the uh. way down. <laughs> okay, so there's a kind of um, yeah. Okay, we should talk about this. I guess if you want. Um, what do you guys have to say about the Molvi XX videos coming out? These do you know about these things? 
Uh, so I have heard of these. I've seen a few, and it's from Pakistan. It's happening quite a lot. I mean, when I was growing up in Pakistan, by the way, I stayed for the first 19 years of my life there. Um, and I was very frequent in mosques and stuff. And this is a very, very common stereotype where this thing happens. It's a more common stereotype that happens more in the northwestern part of Pakistan. There is a Vice documentary about this. It's the word for it called Bacha Bazi. Uh, the Vice documentaries talks about these religious people. And there's also another problem with these truck drivers as well. But the, yeah, it's in madrasas. What's happening Wait, is... The Bacha Bazi is, is an Afghani cultural thing. But this is like specifically happening in leaked. mosques. Yeah, okay. it's leaked into... It's more prominent and more common in the northwestern Pakistani province that oh. borders Afghanistan. Uh, but no, there's mosques and these people who live in like Islamabad I've seen too. Like So... Basically, the madrasa system, to give you a good synopsis, like the ones I've seen, okay, the ones I had f- first-hand experience with, uh, these kids will be from Kashmir or like some remote, remote village in, in northern Pakistan from very poor families. And their parents can't afford to feed them, so that's why they're being sent to these madrasas, most of them. Oh. And when these kids come here, they don't see their family f- the, just once a year for Eid. And some of them don't even get to do that. They see them once, t- twice every few years you know like something like that um so yeah these kids are like as young as six and they range in the to like teens or even early 20s if a guy wants to do hefs of the quran they're trying to do hefs they get up early morning all day they just do that and i used to play with these kids sometimes you know like uh soccer because like i used to live nearby and they'd come play on the same ground but yeah there are stories like that and some kids have brought up these kind of things where their teachers showed them sexually abused and it's not, it's an, in, in Pakistan, the thing is the people that are doing it are not just the small cleric, the local cleric in the mosque. No, these are like political figureheads. Like to give you an idea, imagine uh, uh, like Ravi Zachariah level, kind of like equivalent of wow. Pakistan. Pac- yeah, yeah, that's what's happening right now. So it's basically the same kind of like Christian uh, Catholic church kind of scandal where they're raping little boys. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, it happens a lot in mosques, and it's very unfortunately it is very common. It is very known. Nothing happened with me, nor was I a witness to anything directly. Like, but uh, I definitely heard stories. And she's saying also an interesting thing is that men as old as the twenties, which is kind of weird, right? Because the bachabazi thing is with young boys, right? Well, exactly. That's the uh, the thing is with older men is because like these the society in Pakistan is so weirdly segregated and overly because it's so oh. hyper segregated. Men become these sexual, lustful animals because they never lay an eye on a fucking woman. So they have to get it out somewhere. And I mean, it's not uncommon. You look at history, like when big armies would go in, in, in the past, like Alexander's army and Roman armies, shit happened between soldiers, right? So, but yeah, it's happening uh, a lot in Pakistan and it's sad, but it needs to be stopped. Like it's, 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 alarming at the rate that it's been a few years these videos keep coming out and yeah it's it's very very messed up uh my experiences are because i was living in the northwestern part of the country for most of my life or the northern part islamabad and up so i can only speak for that region but uh yeah all right okay uh yeah so continue with the slides uh do you want to add any uh well yeah you're not pakistani so you wouldn't know i don't know anything about no. this either okay yeah. so chess is um now this one is kind of weird oh it says okay he will play the a game similar to back backgammon mm-hmm. is like one would that okay i was confused about this when i heard this as a as a younger man because i i thought it was backgammon i'm like did that exist back then <laughs> i heard someone saying chess is haram like and so it's it's uh, he would play this game, this little game with little things, is like one who dyed his hand with the flesh and blood of swine. Is that is this some sort of gambling involved? I know backgammon is not usually there's no gambling. Yeah, I don't know. Why is it so severe the punishment? I honestly don't know. Maybe it has to do something with the game of the kafar. But I definitely see that gambling was involved in like loot dice games and stuff, right? So I know that fatwas are for that. But again, there are actually it, guys, it could hadith. be just as simple as like it's a time waster. Like if, if yeah, but there's hadith the where they spend... broke, broke. Mm-hmm. They did go into people's houses and break these boards and stuff because they were. What? Yeah, yeah. Wait, uh, I'll try to find it. But 
Mm. Yeah, I, I posted about it. I don't know if I can find it right that's, now. That's okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe it's just about wasting time. It's more mind control, right? Like, again, it's like, okay, if you want to encourage people to not play as much, that's one thing. But you're like, threaten them with like, you know, what? Oh, like, there you go. I found, found a it? good one. Yeah, here. And this one's from uh, Muatta Malik, so very reliable. And it says, Yahya led from Malik, blah, blah, blah. That when he found one of his family playing dice, he beat him and destroyed the dice. Wow. Yahya said that he heard Malik say there's no good in chess and he disapproved of it. I heard it disapprove of playing it and other worthless games. Oh, yeah. And then the worst, what is there after the truth? <laughs> what? <laughs> How does that make sense? <laughs> but yeah, like they're beating oh, people up for playing board games and destroying dice. Like, yeah, that was um. So let's be. So that was. So people who don't know, that was Momata of Imam Malik. Oh, so he's earliest. like, yeah, he. That's the earliest collection, but that's his. What he's. That's not what Muhammad said, right? Just to be clear, that's what M Imam Malik was doing. He and says he here that this is from from Nafi from Abdullah ibn Omar. So Abdullah ibn Omar, the son of Omar, oh. is beating up his family. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These are uh, the Omar family. Loves They're all nuts. Up, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they love beating <laughs> women, beating the family members, beating the daughters, and oh my god. Okay. All right. Let's. So what is perfume? See, this is an interesting one. Where like <laughs> he'd be sleeping, and like these people would huddle around him and like take his sweat. And then put it in bottles, and then rub his sweat on his their own bodies, thinking it smelled like a musk. I, weird, like just straight up freaking weird. It's considering that the other hadith that talk about those spit rubbing in the face and chest. What's this with is... Muhammad and bodily fluids? Like oh. all of them. <laughs> I whatever actually, bodily fluid. Yeah. There's a hadith about it. It's it's weird. It's also weird that this was, um, I guess the reason they preserved this hadith was because they wanted to say this was a miracle. There's actually like, uh, I remember there's a hadith where it said that the Sahab or one of the slaves of Muhammad ate his poop in the middle of the night. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, it was a <laughs> the blog. Hell? Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. I'll try uh, to find it, but like, yeah. Yeah, okay. I tried to stay yeah, away yeah. from the hadith about the uh, his blood and his uh, whatever, but these ones I've heard a lot about his spit and his sweat like being special. Yeah, yeah. those ones I'm pretty sure are mainstream, like everyone yeah. knows about those. Yeah, yeah. The Sufis, of course, they go next level with Muhammad, right? Like they they'll take his hair and they claim to have his hair and his shoes and his sandals and all of this stuff, and they like venerate it, right? They almost worship it. They take some sort of blessings from all of these things, eh? Yeah, and also like uh, even like recently, there's these guys in Pakistan. They were sitting on stage, those guys, the blasphemy guys, and they were openly saying that we we would love to eat the poop of Muhammad. Like just sitting what? and explicitly yeah, chanting, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, wow. on Twitter. Their videos just I want to eat his poop. I want to be his dog. I want to be his shoe. It's this weird erotic uh, sense of devotion yeah. towards him. Oh, I um, found the Ibn Kasir version of the pee drinking one actually. <laughs> I'll quickly share it. Uh, just for those interested, why this this weird obsession with P for Muhammad? So here he says the uh, Hafiz Abu Yala goes on. Okay, the Messenger of God had a pottery bowl into which he would urinate. When morning came, he would call out, "Oh my Amen!" Pour out the contents of the pot. One night, I got up feeling thirsty and drank what it contained. The what? messenger called out. Um, Ayman poured the contents. I replied, I got up thirsty, drank it. He's commented, you will never suffer from your stomach. Subhanallah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is from uh, Sir al Nabavi. I have the original PDF. I, I don't want to go looking through volume yeah, four. No, no, no. Yeah, I read it though. Wow. And what? There's another one where it says, um, Is this an Islamic post page? Yeah, yeah. Jeez. This one is in Galayla <laughs> Nabua, actually, by, by him. Wait, one very... second. So, so that Can caption that right link? there is not ironic. Muhammad's urine made water sweet and cool. That's that's not an ironic caption. No. This no, is someone sincerely wrote that. Can you send me the link? Yeah, man, like here. But it's no, written by somebody called Sara, and she's cut, got her hair covered. So I'll send you the link, man. Yeah. Okay, I'll so. Share this. But... <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like it's just bizarre. Like these people are eating and drinking his poop and urine. And I mean, let's just... just presume like his stuff was special. Why would Allah make it happen this way? Like, yeah, like well, it's it's like every cult leader's narcissistic yeah. dreamland happening right now, where people are yeah. literally rubbing your shit on their faces. Yeah, I, I don't know. Go. There's no hadith like that where they did that. Oh, I, there are uh, where they're rubbing the spit and chat. Oh, the spit, and... but not the poop. Oh. Not the poop, no, but she okay. ate it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, God. Anyway, let's stop That's talking someone. about his yeah, body yeah. and yeah. his product right, of his right. body. <laughs> okay. Spinning on left side aids with bad dreams. Prophet said a good dream comes from Allah. Wait, a good dream that comes true is from Allah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a bad he dream. He scapegoats every single time. <laughs> I know. I was just like, I had to see that again. I'm like, oh, okay, it's, if it comes true. And a bad dream is from Satan. It's like a child like wrote this like a, <laughs> like what the hell man. Yeah. The good and... guy is good, the bad guy is bad. Yeah. <laughs> the good the this... guy is the good guy is good if he helps you, then he's a good guy. Yeah. Um and if anyone sees a bad dream, he should seek refuge with Allah from Satan and he should spit on the left for the bad dream will not harm him. I don't want to spit in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, some scholars say this is like like dry spit. Like you're just yeah, blowing. Yeah. What does that do? I it's... don't know. It keeps away the Satan's. I no because the Satan was sleeping in your mouth. Maybe it got <laughs> your brain that caused the dream, so you spit it out. <laughs> That's I'm so just weird. trying to yeah connect the yeah. dots. I guess what's going on in that guy's head. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, okay, we have like 20 more to go. I think we can finish and get to the hundred mark. Oh yeah, uh, what are we on right now? What number is this? 80, I think. Okay, 79. So, oh yeah, evil eye. Um, okay, I'll just read it. The influence of the, an evil eye is a fact. If anything would precede the destiny, it would be the influence of an evil eye. <laughs> and when you are asked to take a bath as a cure from the influence of an evil eye, you should take a bath. This is like mod, this is like witchcraft. It's, it's, witchcraft. <laughs> it's, like, like, it's like, you know, you get, like, <laughs> throw the, those priests, they come to throw the holy water and then make the cross or the sprinkles. Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> Well, it doesn't like, explicitly say who tells you to take a bath. Like it says, uh, it's I remember like, the. I think the prophet the told version, you or something. There's the full okay. version where this guy's like he's very beautiful. The Sahabi <laughs> takes off his shirt and his skin is very white like a virgin. So another Sahabi compliments him and he falls. And then <laughs> yeah. they're like, "Yo, this guy just fell in the carry him to Muhammad." So he's like, "Yeah, pour water on him. He'll wake up." And they did that, and that cured his evil eye. <laughs> yeah, man, it's just. The weirdest shit ever happens. I mean, I think the reason for that is because Muhammad was trying to curb jealousy or something like that. Like he was probably trying to keep his soldiers from like envying each other and causing fighting amongst each other. Right. So that's probably it's just so stupid that it's so superstitious. Like it's oh, it's so idiotic. It's so idiotic. I mean, it's let's so let's say God is just speaking their language, right? Like that's yeah. just how they convey the information to primitive people. Is does not does God not understand that we would find it suspicious and not believe it anymore today? Like he he would make an exception for us. He'd be like, "Okay, guys, I get it. It sounds very silly." So yeah, yeah. I want to talk about the bath thing. This one's really interesting. This hadith, and this one goes about an incident. Uh, and this somebody else has to take a bath on somebody else's behalf to get the evil. It's a let's read it. I love how you uh, you search for evil eye bath. It's like, it's <laughs> evil eye bath. <laughs> uh, I swear by God. So one guy was taking a bath, you know, it's just just bros to taking a shower together, holding hands. And this one guy's like, I swear by God that I have no seen no skin to compare with that. I, what I have seen today, not even that of a secluded girl. <laughs> Sahel fell to the ground and people went to God's messenger and said to him, Oh, messenger, can you do anything for this dude? We swear by God that he cannot raise his head. He asked if they suspected anyone. And when they replied that they suspected Amir bin Rabla. Oh, they have a suspect? Grand damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was cool. You're getting more interesting. Your mother, the, the quote of Muhammad. He cast <laughs> evil eye on me. Suspect number one. How do you plead? Not guilty, did, you, did you have a thought crime? Did you think a thought crime about this guy? Oh, uh. Uh, bring the witnesses, bring the witnesses. <laughs> Witness number one, he looked at me when I took my shirt off. Witness number two, 
Yeah, I saw the guy. He was talking about, you know, how beautiful his wife was. And next thing you know, his wife fell down dead. <laughs> like, no, what? the guy just fell down. This is all like dudes. No, no, I'm just making up another story. I mean, that, that's what could happen, right? Because if yeah. you cast evil eye on someone, you cause harm to them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. God's messenger summoned Amir and speaking roughly to him. So he knew that this guy was causing some shit. I don't know. He's got magic eyes, man. I wish I, I, I had that power, like psychic. <laughs> So he said, why does one of you kill his brother? Why did you not invoke a blessing? Bathe on the blessing his behalf. Does it? Like the blessing undoes the evil eye? Allah, no evil yeah, eye happens, okay. right? Okay. Yeah, and he says, good. Yeah. bathe on his behalf. Now, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the, the what? The instigator causing the evil eye <laughs> taking a bath? Amr then washed on his behalf his face, hands, elbows, knees, it's like that song, head, shoulder, knees, and toes. <laughs> you know, this was um, the first ever video I made on YouTube was about Evil Eye. Because oh, I found it so ridiculous. It was just like, yeah, it's such a cringe video. If you watch it, it's like so bad. You know, I was just like trying to learn. I had the camera. I think even the camera was like up the long way. I wasn't even widescreen. It was just. Um, and I want to share one thing once you're done. Go ahead and finish this. And I'm just on. baffled what I just read. I'm just kind of trying to make sense of it on my own. Amr then washed on his behalf, and it goes on. He washed inside his lower garment as well. Then collected the same water that he'd already washed it in a vessel and poured it over him. So he washes himself with it. Huh? And it mentions the detail like inside his undergarments. And then he collects all that dirty water. That washed the evil eye off of him and <laughs> pours it onto the unconscious. How, how explicit can I be about describing this? Like, he washed his, <laughs> his, his nether regions with water and then he poured it on him <laughs> and that I, woke him up. <laughs> I mean, what yeah. the hell? And then Imam Why do Malik, I care about his thighs or his nether regions being involved yeah. in this? Like, well, Imam uh, Malik is like going about on and on that, you know. In another it's version. True. Of that. Yeah. <laughs> but. Damn, this is just some weird ass, weird ass shit, man. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen because I just want to make this clear that this is in the Quran, right? And from the mm -hmm. evil of an envy of any envies, eh? Mm -hmm. This is this is in the Quran. So a lot of times people say, ha ha, you idiots are making fun of Hadith. No, well, a <laughs> lot of this actually goes back to Quran. Mm -hmm. well, it's and not the verse only before Hadith. it. That's black magic too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Black magic, um, evil eye, and uh hey Jimmy, nice to see you. Uh shout out to Jimmy Bangash, our favorite gem, gay, ex Muslim. Um, love him so much. <laughs> right. Yeah, these guys are having fun, man. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Crossing your fingers negates the effect of evil eye. I see a lot of cultural hey, uh, nice maybe car. Aladdin, you can tell me about this. You might know more about this. This this blue and white eye thing. I don't know if I see a lot mm -hmm. of Arabs uh have it in the houses it protects you from I've evil eye it, or like i've been to turkey and i've seen it a lot <clears throat> there and it's it's more superstition it's supposed to protect you from evil eye yeah, yeah. but um, a lot of people simultaneously like they'd either put it on like it's kind of like a horoscopes thing you know mm. like some people have it just for fun and others actually believe that it's for the evil eye yeah. um mm -hmm. but it's not it's, it's not supposed to be islamic just i don't just, think so just another thing before we get into we move on from the evil eye we're talking about <laughs> magic yep. Yeah. I had just this one hadith or well, um, Muhammad's wife from Mata Malik that they would just kill people suspected oh. of magic and witchcraft the same way the church did. And you see here, uh, Hafsa, the wife of the prophet, killed one of her slave girls who had used sorcery against her. She was a mudabbara. How do you prove that? How do you prove that? You can't. And that's the thing. Muhammad's wife just killed this lady at, Probably had a petty argument or something silly, but what it says next is mudabbara. Now, if I'm not mistaken, mudabbara means somebody that's promised to be released or something. No, one second. Um, something like mudabbara? that. Wait, where are you reading this? Which line? Uh, she was a mudabbara. Okay, Hafsa gave her the order. Um, let me read it in Arabic. Continue. I'll, I'll read it. In yeah, Arabic. yeah. And then yeah, Hafsa gave the order and she was killed. And then Malik said, "The sorcerer is the one." We use a sorcery for himself, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and yeah, it should be should be killed, basically. That's what this is. 
But it's just like, yeah, like I said, like the superstitious thinking leads to straight up cold blooded murder by somebody very close to Muhammad. In fact, the daughter of Omar, right? Uh, second Caliph and Muhammad's wife, Hafsa. She's just killing her slave girl. It's sad. I'm Anyways. trying to understand what that word means in that context, but it, it means like planning or, or cunning. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So From what I remember, in the context though, it might have a different kind of meaning. Okay, okay, yeah. But that so, was something interesting. Yeah. So we've been, we've been going on for ninety five minutes now. Should yeah. we um should we let's just close up? I think. Uh, I think there's still a bunch of slides. I don't want I don't want to rush slides, through them. Yeah. yeah, no, we definitely don't want to rush through that. Yeah. Uh, better that we take time and we do it in detail because there's a lot of stuff to uncover. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's been it's been a wrap. I mean, we've been to unfortunately we got <laughs> a lot of this stuff was like, what uh, the fuck? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? It um, just it just shows like how incredibly ridiculous something can be once you actually peer away that filter of uh, of belief and faith, and it just becomes like Family Guy kind of a TV show, <laughs> silly. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. Should we take some calls? Maybe a couple of calls. Or? Yeah, sure. If anyone's yeah. interested, I had it on the stream, but I only got we only got Mo. And nobody else called in. Um, I'm just gonna add uh, Apostate Aladdin has his own channel. So if you guys mm -hmm. don't know, I'm just gonna share it on the screen. Uh, you take a look at his channel. He's doing well on YouTube. I definitely think you should all go right now and subscribe to his channel right now. Go here, click on subscribe. Don't unsubscribe. If you don't <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to share the link right here. It's in the description as well. Please do support our fellow Mulitad, apostate brother. And yeah, it's right there. Let's get him to a thousand subs. He's at 642 now. Uh, I'm at Thank like you. 11K. So there's 137 people here. So it should be like 800 by the time this. If you enjoyed this specific content, I mean, you're going to enjoy his content. It's going to be right on the same sort of thing, you know, from his perspective. And he has, he has a way of doing things that's, that's you know, that's unique. Um, Thank you. I, I really enjoy your TikToks. Unfortunately, I know TikTok is just very, it's its just not a good platform for us ex-Muslims, unfortunately. So uh, mm -hmm. it is what it is. So, but, but yeah, do more on YouTube, my man. And uh, he has some good interviews going on here. Some, some, you know, good short videos reflecting on certain things, which I think are really good. So yeah, definitely mm -hmm. um, do sub, subscribe and, uh, and all that fun stuff. Thank you. I definitely didn't pay him to say that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford to, but no. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I don't so, want to yeah. get into the breastfeeding adults because that we will oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. next time with the whole Muhammad hijab controversy. Sheikh Albani saying that it's okay for doing oh. that. <laughs> another day, another time. But yeah, we have 20 more slides, 21 more slides to go. And what we'll do is we'll have one more episode. And uh, Aladdin is more than welcome to bring. Uh, his flying carpet and his genie along his lamp with us uh, next perfect. time as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, um, <laughs> and Mo wants to call in, so let's let him call in one more yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, for we'll, sure. Uh, for we'll sure. finish the last couple of questions he had. Um, and I do think if we keep this up regularly, we'll get more callers. It's just that I know with, when things are not planned, probably people need to plan time mm -hmm. outside of the specific lives or whatever. Maybe they want to call in, but you know they have work or. For us, it's nighttime. Maybe they're going to bed. The kids are there and it can't be loud, you know, making phone calls and stuff. You know, you can have your headphones on. So I'm, I'm sure there's lots of reasons why people can't actually call in right now, which is understandable. But yeah, let's let's try to do this regularly. Uh, the link, yep, I'll send the link. I, I don't think we're going to do it the same time next week as uh, Abdul Gondal is. Um, I think you're going to be busy. So we're going to we'll pick a different time. We'll see what we can do. But we'll try to do this every week if we can. It'd be good. Yeah. We'll try the best, yeah? Yeah, more regular since the virus is kind of finishing off now, at least in our part of the world. I'm vaccinated. Things are getting back to normal. I hope everybody's safe, healthy, and sound. And yeah, stay tuned for more. Uh, lots of content coming up. We have after this stream, I'm planning to finish off the Scandals of Aisha stream, which we did one part of it, dealing with her marriage. And there's lots more because uh, her jealousy is... It actually played quite a significant role in Muhammad's life and how Islam formed. Like, you know, like her cheating on him led to the whole creation of the witness rule, Allegedly. child marriage, Allegedly, Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. child marriage. Then her, her hadith basically built Islam because she's the second most uh, 
profuse narrator of Hadith after, I think, Abu Huraira, right? Yeah, we'll talk about that as well, but uh, it was amazing doing this. It's been a while, I know. I don't know if I'm going to be coming back to Twitter. I'll try to appeal. I tried appealing once. Uh, honestly, like being away from Twitter, it's not the worst thing. I know it's a like there's a lot of people to engage with, but after like the whole mass lagging, they're going to just do the same thing again. I'm going to focus more on uh, on more YouTube videos now, and I have to still focus on that documentary. And yeah, that's that's it from my side. They're not going to shut you down, right? You're just going to move to a different medium. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, how's it going, man? All right. I was I was ready to call you Dr. Gondal, but I guess I can wait for a few more weeks, maybe a few more months, but that's okay. A few more um, years. <laughs> once again, thank you very much for taking me in, and thanks for your patience, and thanks for all the knowledge and wisdom you all spread. Not just to me, but everybody else out there, You're and welcome, your Thanks, audience man. who are gonna see this this video later on. Now, the pathology that I was talking about, and maybe Abdullah Gondal, you may um, you may see where I'm coming from, and also both of the gentlemen too, is about sexually transmitted disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> knowing Muhammad, he had an ugly infancy. He was passed on by uh, one nanny to another to another. I What I understand is he was passed to about six or eight nannies, if not more. And then later on, his childhood was also abused. It was abusive. His uh, early adulthood was also, most of the time was spent at doing labor jobs. So when something like this happens, you tend to understand that person or entity where you can see it must be a disturbed mental process there. Hmm. Uh, having said that, most people who, and I'm not generalizing here, I'm just giving the facts away, um, mental attitude has a lot to do with STD, sexually transmitted diseases, that is. And when I look at his, when I look at his life, he was, he had arthritis, okay? He definitely had arthritis. He also had a chest pain. He complained of chest pain. He felt like he had something was cutting his aorta, maybe it was abdominal aorta, maybe it was, you know, that, that could be a dissecting aneurysm, I'm not sure. But all these signs and indica uh, symptoms and indications lead me to think about a sexually transmitted disease, which was very common at that time, and in tertiary or the later stage, it presents such symptoms called syphilis. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've heard about this theory, yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure how well we can uh, one can prove it or can yeah. disprove it. Hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not here to either prove or disapprove. I'm just trying hmm. to pick your brains about. I I did I did think about this because we do see that his sexual contacts were pretty high. Mm -hmm. And obviously there was no protection and he would brag that he would go no have sex with no washing in between. There's multiple hadith to attest to that. And on top of that, these women, some of them, he would buy off other people as slaves. Or sometimes he would take the wives of other men when he'd captured them and make them his own, right? And some of them were widows, had kids. So, and then but Aisha the was is, also allegedly... Yeah, but the thing is, he, he, like, there's no... Like it would only be him with them. So if he had an like, how would that STD spread? Because his wives are his forever and ever and ever until they die. But well, before, like before I'm him, born. they can kind of spread it to him from somebody else. And then he that's had possible. slaves that were circulating with other people, right? That mm -hmm. he was buying, and so that's the problem. Um, so, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Another thing I noticed was uh, with syphilis, right? Like in the later part of his life, he became a little paranoid. At, and the way he died was kind of weird. Like he had this huge headache and then a sudden onset of fever. And uh, yeah, it's just bizarre. He died. He could have been a stroke. Uh, could have been syphilis. There was one point where they gave him some medicine forcefully. It's in Bukhari and the Shia Hadith as well. And the Shia claim that Aisha actually gave him poison to kill him. That's their controversy. But uh, yeah, there's uh, the Sunni hadith said that they, 
Muhammad was just paranoid at the end. And then he made all of the other people in that household drink that same medicine just to clear his mind that he wasn't poisoned. But then he died the next day anyway. So and, and given he so scared that, of being poisoned? Hmm. And given the fact that a he lot of enemies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, given the fact that he was also having some visual loss. Mm -hmm. uh, visual loss is also oh, yeah. a complication. Yeah, it's also a later complication in syphilis. Um, let me give you my standard disclaimer here, so guys. I always say that I'm not against Muslims. Muslims are dear and near to me. They are close to my heart. They are also humans. They're also people just like me, you, and everybody else. What I'm against is the doctrine of Islam. That's where we have the issue at. The issue. Um, Muhammad was spreading, and later on his followers, and even until today, they are all spreading the false narrative and the, the doctrine of Islam, and that's what I'm against. So viewers, if you see my video, and if you see this clip, or if you see, we are not against you. We love you. We really like you. We love you. Please come with the questions here so that could be answered adequately by these gentlemen. They are extremely knowledgeable. But coming back to the syphilitic condition, he also had limp in his leg. He also mm -hmm. had, um, when his two teeth, I'm not sure what part of the upper or the lower jaw was broken in the, in the Battle of Ahad. His recovery, some references say, took way longer, which is also could be due to bad oral hygiene, could also be due to a diabetes kind of condition or syphilis again. So mm -hmm. all these, all these. Yeah, I don't think we have a chart we can consult here for the patient, so it's going to be very hard to yeah pin it on him. There are there are certain things like with the black magic episode, like what pops up about him that he lost vision to the point where uh, the, the I think one of the sira said that he couldn't get up and see the doorknob or the door handle in front of him, and he'd get up and he'd collapse, and then. Uh, Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi, in his tafsir of the two mauzatain, the two quls, he says that Muhammad would be standing and his leg would go limp and he'd just suddenly just twist and fall down all of a sudden. And then, coupled with like his. Uh, and the thing is that the Black Magic episode lasted in Hadith, the memory problem where he would forget things that he was doing. That amnesia phase, transient amnesia, it also occurs with epilepsy, but uh, I was looking from that perspective too it happened in the latter half like i think a year, two three years before his death is in the later half of his life too so again if he we like i will try to get into this from a few different perspectives in the documentary because these are similar to stroke it could be a tumor it could be a pr tumor getting worse it could be an aneurysm because there's fever that gets onset after stroke and that's a very bad sign that's exactly what happened there's other hadith where Muhammad is like uh, is uh, waking up fainting, waking up fainting like seven times in one day. So there is a lot of speculation on his death, but there are some and we can speculate is all I'll say. Yeah. Well, in the, in the later stage, in the tertiary stage of syphilis, these are the kind of complications <clears throat> of finding a patient mm -hmm. that discuss about the cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular yeah. disease could be could be also a poison, but you know, they're all coinciding and converging mm -hmm. on focus. And so, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. I'm going to have to be the, the, the bad moderator here and uh, yeah, just okay. say, like, I thank you so much for your, for your, you know, your insight and your, you know, possible theory there as to what could have been causing some of these things. I do appreciate it. Um, right. I think the Bill Gondal has a little bit of a different, you know, theory on this. But, yeah, I do appreciate this. These are all possibilities. You never know. I mean, you could uh, also have both like epilepsy had too much sex and caught syphilis yeah hypersexuality yeah yeah you don't so, know yeah so i definitely need to wrap this up mom and so i just want to say thank you for the call thank you thank okay. you so much you. Uh, again i have that special documentary coming out we will definitely discuss these things in a lot more detail with the references directly from the books so don't worry you'll like that excited. Uh, excited. Yeah, excited. thank you thank yeah. you mo okay bye um, yeah, and just want to say thank you to ex-Muslims of Norway for your donation. And also going to leave this comment late into the live, but so happy to see Gondol back. Oh, man, people are missing you. Every every stream I do, people are asking, when is Gondol coming back? When is Gondol coming back? <laughs> when will he start his YouTube channel? Is he, uh, Aladdin has beat you to the punch. <laughs> like, you're, you're late to the show now. He already has almost 1,000 subscribers. 
people are asking. I understand. I understand that it's one of those things where if you're not going to have time to dedicate, then, you know, you kind of feel like, why bother? Right? Is that what it is? That's basically what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's like consistency, motivation, and a lot of things going on in life. It's just finding time and then having family and all that stuff. Yeah. It's just and, like, and, you think the algorithm forces you to make yeah. daily or weekly uploads to get more views. And I just can't sustain that, that load. Yeah. That's the problem. Exactly. I, 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 I just totally figured, you know, I, I'd rather just put in a video every now and then. I don't care about the algorithm. I don't care about optimizing it at this point. Mm -hmm. Just uh, put out videos, man. Like, just do it. But also, yeah. if, if it's going to be a headache for you, don't don't get into it. Like, yeah. Like, I might have question. what I'm thinking of is like, I might have these projects that I do, like this epilepsy project I'm doing. I might have uh, another project where I discuss comparing Islam to prior I answer from an anthropological lens, like, but those projects, like, I make a one video a year or like every yeah. six months or every three months, like, kind of Sharif Gaber style because I want to do it good. And yeah. I have like a, a, a standard or a certain scope in mind. Like, when I make my channel, it's going to be more like an investigative documentary style, but I want it to look like that and not like, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah. that's a few things. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's definitely the the difficulty with YouTube is it takes a long time to grow, and you know in the beginning you have you uploading videos with like fifty views, hundred views. It just takes it can it can feel like a drag, especially if you're just studying. So and of course Abdul Gandal always comes on the channel anytime, and you know we have a shared audience. We have a lot of um, you know fans of both of us, which is great. I mean Abdul Gandal was one of the earliest interviews I did. And, you know, right away when he called me, I, I felt an instant connection to this guy. And, uh, of course, his, his wife as well is also ex-Muslim. So that, that that's also awesome as well. So, yeah, it's it's great. And um, uh, fin any final words? I, I did already promote Apostate Aladdin's channel, but I'm just going to recommend it one more time. Uh, do check out his channel. Uh, any final words from you, Aladdin? Uh, no, none to share. Uh, just thank you for inviting me to this. Uh, this has been fun. Uh, I'd love to join another time. Awesome. Okay, guys. Uh, oh, and look who we have. Hey, Not how's it going? <laughs> Need to get you on here again for one of these. Uh, that'll be fun too. Actually, yeah. Good. Let's try. Let's try next uh, one. The last twenty, maybe if you can have him and have a laugh too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and with one, I gotta say, like honestly, straight up, I've been loving your videos. I laughed my ass off. I completely died laughing watching that. That's fake death threat to a Christian. <laughs> that, the, the analysis you did on it, like, do dawa with the we. And it, I was like, I was dying laughing. It was just so funny. And uh, of course, n never mind that, like, you know, that one, even the ones you've been doing with Sajid, you know, it's one of my pet peeves when Muslims misrepresent the Bible. It pisses mm -hmm. me off so much. Not because I'm Christian. I don't even care about Christianity. But like, it irritates me that they're just lying like that, saying the Bible, like, like you know, Ahmed Didat style, show me where the Bible says Jesus is God. Okay, there's like, there's like 50 references. <laughs> it's like, like, anyone that knows the Bible knows the gospel, knows that it's all over the place. Yeah. Son of God, God, you know, in the beginning was God, like obviously in John, it's the strongest, but even starting from like Mark, it's it's there, it's throughout the Bible. This is not a corruption. This is what the Bible is about. This is what the Gospels are about. So to me, it drives me crazy when I see that. And I'm, I'm glad you put him in his place. Uh, I hope, um, yeah, I hope he keeps, <laughs> I hope he keeps responding to you though, because <laughs> this will be good. This is like, this is awesome, you know, getting like a Muslim YouTuber responding to you. And oh, like Sajid Lipham, is that what you're talking yeah. about? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Sajid is this responding to Apostle Prophet. And Apostle Prophet is just like, Lidwan is just like knocking it home, like video after right video. On. Right on. I mean, that's what we want to see. I think we've got to the point now where first they just want to ignore you. Now they're like, we can't ignore you anymore. So we're going to <laughs> we're gonna respond to you. Like, like that's what we wanted, right? I we wanted I think, to have these conversations. I think like the like the amount of exos I've been meeting in real life, like honestly, back in the day, like every other like brown person I'd see, I'd expect <laughs> them to be 90% chance that they're Muslim, 10%. Even if they're not practicing, they still like you go yeah. to a bar, you'd see a brown guy, they will be <laughs> drinking, but they'll tell you I don't eat pork and they'll yeah. tell you that they're Muslim and you can be. And they, this guy told me you can't be drunk and talk about Muhammad because that's instantly blasphemy yeah. as a Muslim. <laughs> 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 so, but anyways. Uh, but now I meet these people and like kind of like I met like the last I give you straight up I've, the last 10 brown people I've met eight of them were ex-Muslim yeah wow yeah 
I don't know if that's the area life. I, I live with the demographic, but I mean, I live in the West. Yeah. Western Muslims are more liberal, but I don't know if it's what's happened in the past few years, but hopefully the movement is growing. It's uh, growing at an exponential pace. And also like the things that I'm inheriting from Pakistan, like the speed it's growing at, the atheists there are are just popping. There's channels popping up in Urdu, in Arabic, in Punjabi. It's, it's like we're being uh, almost overtaken in terms of like popularity <laughs> in certain spheres. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm happy That's with cool. that. I'm yeah. happy with people talking just passing about this. the torch on. You started yeah. a trickle and now it's becoming a river and there <laughs> you go. It's going to be a flood. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I'm going to end it on that. Uh thank you and yeah, that was a nice uh, little surprise at the end. Okay, guys, and uh we'll see you at the next uh two Abdullahs. Uh, bye for now. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Guys, gals, I should